Blockchain.com. Hum, 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 hum. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, We're protesting licensing laws. In 2005, New Hampshire, the rediscovered technique of civil disobedience seemed like a novelty. More recently, textbook civil disobedience, at least, has faded in relative importance around here. When it does happen, it tends to look more like this. As in, not textbook more of a spontaneous type of event rather than a planned one. Although I bemoan the apparent reduction in textbook civil disobedience, the fact is it's probably less necessary now than it used to be. That's because civil disobedience, I tend to think, is sort of a transitional thing. Like guerrilla warfare, it's something you do when you're desperate. As a movement becomes more powerful, civil disobedience becomes less and less necessary, maybe it also becomes less and less dangerous. All right, so I'm going on in. Here's me doing some civil disobedience in early 2013. By then, the chances of getting arrested for textbook civil disobedience had gone down quite a bit. As you can see here, no cops even showed up. As we defied a mayoral edict, demanding that I get permission to film in City Hall. Uh, Civil disobedience isn't just a transitional phase for movements. I think it tends to be a transitional phase for individuals. Mike Fisher here did his one famous act of civil disobedience and then almost immediately moved on into other things, eventually moving out of the movement and New Hampshire completely. (laughs) Then there was Russell Canning, who's done it a few times, but over the years he seems to do it less and less. I did textbook civil disobedience, you know, back in the 2007 to 2009 era. You know, it seemed like one of the most important things I could do. But over time, uh, you know, my YouTube channel got so much more powerful that it became a a better use of time and to just generate my own publicity as opposed to doing something designed to uh, bring the mainstream press into action. Civil disobedience is an indirect way of achieving publicity, but... You know, making your own poor man's TV station is a more direct route to the same end. I do think for folks who are moving to New Hampshire and they want to try to do civil disobedience, or textbook civil disobedience especially, I think it's still needed. And I think that when you do it, especially if you're a young person, you should try to think think four or five years down the road when you're not going to be doing that kind of thing anymore. Because you're probably not. So you want to try and ideally pick a type of civil disobedience that won't get you a felony, that won't really haunt you for life. You know, always go into a conflict with an exit strategy. So when I had sort of a civil disobedience campaign back around 2008, it took me nine different, I had to do nine different events before I, before I could succeed in getting arrested. Videotaping here also. I'm uh, I'm uh, going to respectfully decline to comply with your request. I am prepared to be arrested rather than. That's fine. And so this is the ninth one here, where I was, uh, you know, videotaping without permission in the court lobby at Keene. Well, the exit strategy here was, you know, number one, make sure that it's a, you know, a very small offense, then take the hit for it, go to jail or do community service, and it's over. In the event, I ended up serving six days in jail for refusing to pay the alleged $250 fine. Later on, the so-called blemish on my record did come up during a different trial for videotaping, but the prosecutor uh, was stumbling all over himself to, to make clear how little that mattered and how he didn't mind at all that I had been arrested for, for, being, uh, for filming you know, earlier, and it wasn't going to affect my... Uh, you know, my, my later situation. So that particular exit strategy worked. Uh, and of course, there, you know, there were, there were goals to the disobedience, which, you know, included inspiring others to do similar things. And that, that worked too. I would call it a fail in terms of actually securing the right to videotape in court lobbies, but give it time. Anyway, point being the reality is our movement is growing up and as such, it doesn't have to rely on civil disobedience as much. You know, for instance, as an example, if you think about the Estonians don't need to do a lot of civil disobedience against the Soviet Union anymore, right? 
hopefully that's eventually where we'll be in a position where we want a victory that's so obvious that we don't have to do this kind of thing anymore. Blockchain.info's free Bitcoin web wallet, chock full of privacy and security features, two-factor authentication, a second password for sending coins. They never have control over your passwords or your coins. They don't even require your personal info. Get yours today at Blockchain.com. Um, 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 um.